All right, next up, we have a power trio hailing from Kip. All right, so we've got, yeah, Kip is in the house. We've got Hugo Carvajal. He's the Director of Family and Community Engagement at Kip, Massachusetts. Uh, Mecca Smith is the Chief of Staff at Kip, Massachusetts and has a really big fan club. And Patricia Ann McCaffrey is a Learning Specialist at Kip Academy Lynn. And they've got some really big ideas about how schools might re-envision family engagement, starting with one really simple step, listening. Picture this. Esther is sitting in class. She's waiting to get back the first test of the spring. She studied with her family because in the fall, she didn't pass. She really wanted to do well. She gets back her test, and she mastered a majority of the standards with an 85%. In addition to being an adult ESL, ESOL learner, Esther is a proud mother of two fourth graders and one seventh grader. Engaging Esther in ESOL classes is one way where we can broaden the definition of family engagement. While many would agree that family engagement and building relationships is critical for younger students, engagement can actually transcend a child's classroom walls. When a school commits to educating and also engaging families, it really strengthens networks in and outside of its building. For instance, Esther gains English language proficiency skills and confidence in her ability to communicate with native English speakers when she takes ESOL classes at her child's school. Many of our families and community members, like Esther, identify as people of color and grew up experiencing some of the unjust rules and regulations designed to keep them impoverished and uninformed. <coughs> Cynthia, another friend from the community, as a child experienced four bus in, in Boston, and she saw her father unable to get a loan to buy a home where he wanted, in spite of dedicating his life to the police department due to redlining practices. Trust in our systems, including education, has been severely damaged for educationally underserved communities. Studies have shown that systematically, marginalized families are often pushed out of parent-teacher associations. This widens the collaboration gap between families and teachers. At times, schools welcome family engagement, but only look at challenges, situations, and solutions from the school's perspective. It is our belief that the school has the responsibility and opportunity to value and engage families' voices. The main problem we are seeing in communities of color in and around Boston, such as where Esther and Cynthia live, is that too often decisions about defining engagement are made divorced from the input of the very people they impact, the family and community members themselves. About 10 years ago, we started hosting a series of culture nights at our school during Latino Heritage Month and Black History Month because we wanted to celebrate our students' backgrounds. We assumed that by providing plenty of pizza and pastelitos, that was going to be enough to keep our families happy. But it wasn't. It really wasn't. <laughs> we were shocked to find out that some families decided not to attend at all. And even those who came, they weren't necessarily enthralled by a meticulous planning process. So we had to figure out what was going on. We decided to ask our families directly, and we started to survey them. We had to figure out exactly what they really wanted and needed from us. How would they define family engagement? Turns out they wanted to see more local community organizations directly involved with the school. They wanted us to be part of the solution of providing ESOL classes to our families. They wanted us to keep the lights on after 5 p.m. when children left the school so they could have meetings. They were asking for more than just culture nights. This basic practice of seeking input respectfully from families positively influenced collaboration between families and teachers, and within the family unit between parent and child, for everyone had a purpose at school. And different communities will want or need different things. For instance, our communities in Lynn, our families really wanted ESOL classes, whereas our families in Boston, they really wanted civic engagement classes so they can activate their knowledge and really make a difference in their neighborhoods. Therefore, we asked what they wanted and made our programs accordingly. Remember Cynthia? 
As a housing activist, she's been involved in local organizations for years, way before our school even existed. Once we responded to family feedback and really doubled down on strengthening our community partnerships, we were open to a whole world of Cynthia's, who also shared our vision for building up strong community schools. Since then, Cynthia has been to our school and she's talked with hundreds of our middle school students about her personal story. She shared her experiences as a child and her relationships to schools, how she learned about systems, and how her community ties have all influenced her activism. Cynthia's grandchild currently attends our school. And Esther has shared with us that by participating in ESOL classes and civic engagement, she has not only increased her language proficiency, but also her ability and confidence to navigate the systems and understand the culture of her adopted country. She has also strengthened her social networks and her capacity to advocate for her children's education. And she wants to help other families by raising awareness around the inequities that le English language learning families can face. As a community learning teacher, I have the ability to make relationships with families that I would not have made before. For example, one of my sixth graders, he wasn't following expectations in class, so he earned a consequence. And then I had to have a conversation with his father that he, the star player of the soccer team, was not going to be playing in that day's game. A conversation that could have gone pretty poorly. However, I was able to utilize a relationship that I had made through this ESOL classes and jokingly to say to him, you know, you and your son are pretty similar. You both don't like to listen to the teacher when they're giving instructions. <laughs> yeah, he laughed just like you did. And then I was then able to explain to him in more depth and detail of what the situation really happened. And then he was able at the end to say, thank you so much for holding us both to such high expectations. This is just one way of how um, broadening the definition of family engagement can leak into the traditional school day. It is our belief that the school has a responsibility and opportunity to value and engage families' voices. Patricia Ann would not have been able to form that relationship with the parent if the school had not first created the spaces to listen to our families. We need to find out what families want, need, and have to offer. We need to work with community leaders, faith congregations, parent leaders, even local government to advocate for disenfranchised families to truly have a seat at the table at school and outside of school. Many of our families and community members have asked us for citizenship classes, computer classes, and programs to build their capacity and employability skills, and they've supported those programs. Without them, could not, they could not have been happening. Many families have also participated in voting drives, and they know that without voting power, politicians are not going to pay attention. Over the past decade, hundreds of participants have become U.S. citizens, and over 4,000 have taken ESOL classes in our programs. When schools are open to true collaboration with families and community members, parallel learning experiences can thrive. When I think of this, I imagine how schools should really be the hub of a community's life, right? They should be places where families can gather, engage with one another, advocate and develop those types of skills, not just for the benefit of the school, but to incite community-wide change. We've seen some examples of this through our own programs, and we're really proud of that. But we also recognize that what we offer isn't perfect, nor is it all-encompassing. For that reason, we are constantly asking feedback from our families and community members to better understand what it is that they're truly seeking. We still give a version of that initial survey we started 10 years ago, every year, to keep a constant pulse on what's truly on the minds and hearts of our families and community members. It is our belief that the school has a responsibility and an opportunity to value and engage the voices of our families. And we also recognize that not all schools have the ability to and resources to provide things like we have for Esther and for Cynthia. However, we still have the responsibility to increase our family's social capital. And doing so is actually a lot easier where you know where to look, the resources you already have. Ten years ago, when we were just starting this program, we reallocated Title I funds and put it towards family and community engagement. And then we needed a nighttime staff, so we looked at the staff that we already had and utilized that as a perfect opportunity to show that a community active professional is a symbiotic relationship between the school and the community. 
we also realize that that is too much for some schools too. So listen up if that's you. If that's you, then just open up your schools after hours and invite in the community organizations that are already there. Ask if they need to hold town hall meetings. Ask if your families need to know the organizations that already occur. Create a list. Give them to your families. Because, put simply, if your families and teachers do not know about organizations, how can they utilize them? This is the exact type of questions that schools should be wrestling with. We're all educators, and we recognize the role that engagement plays in developing relationships between students and families in schools. And for true engagement to happen, everyone has to have the opportunity to share their perspective. So we're not just talking about us inviting others to have a seat at the table, no. Together, we all pull up chairs and set the table. We all reach across, and we bridge those collaboration gaps, whether they be real or perceived, historic or embodied by a student sitting right in front of you. More Esther's and Cynthia's occur every single day. It is our belief that the school has the responsibility and opportunity to value and engage families' voices. What do you believe that our families and communities have to contribute? Thank, Thank you. you.